So back to Mike. Um, he's also the community manager for another open source project that we love. Free switch. So you've waited this long to do my job. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming in today. Um, this is always on the go with free switch. And so we're going to be working a little bit with free switch and go. Um, so instead of just kind of, uh, I'm going to start with a little bit of my history. So we did it a little bit before, but we got to do the slide, right? Um, I am the founder and CEO of Wastel, and I'm the community liaison for the Free Switch project. You guys have probably seen me. I'm on call every Wednesday with like Ken and a bunch of other, ca other characters. There's also a lot of people in the audience who, who have also been on the show. Um, we also have Giovanni here today, <laughs> who's another member of the Free Switch project. If you guys have any questions, listen, we're here. We want you to use the software. We want you to use OpenSips too, but we want you to use FreeSwitch. So ask us anything you want. You know, use us as a resource. You've come all this way. We, we want to help you, and we want to make sure you're doing everything right. So today's talk is on ESL. And so just like the boat tour, I want to make sure everyone has a good time. So instead of just asking the audience questions, I am going to be giving out prizes, and this is not unique. David Duffett did it earlier today, right? So, yeah, who wants a lollipop? Me! <laughs> All you have to do is answer what is ESL, and maybe what it does, too. <laughs> event socket library which interact with the events and uh, all of the activity of the uh, free switch. Well, thank you, Shlomo. <laughs> and so you use it quite a bit, right? Yeah, yeah. There's, you know, event socket layer is actually very special because, you know, when you're dealing with user-created applications, you can really control free switch from a finite level and make exceptionally dynamic things. And with all that power, there's access, right? And the question is, how do we deal with that access? How do we lock it down and how we secure it? And that's going to be really what we're going to be focusing on today. Um, <laughs> so I try to get all the commands in. And this is not easy. This is just last night I installed FreeSwitch and did a standard vanilla install. And there's like 220 commands, right? And so I listed all the commands. Maybe not their hundred, they're maybe not hundred percent applicable, but there's a lot of things you can do. But the question is, how can this be abused? Right? What are some of the bad commands that can be used? <laughs> so you can't answer all the questions. Wait, did I give you a live problem? No, I think I no, it would be shut up. Why? No, it was shut up. So how can ESL really be abused? Anyone? Giovanni, how can you no, be? They, they told them from uh, behind. All right, so wait. What is it? You can hang up all the calls. What's that? You can hang up all the calls. Yeah, you can hang up all the calls, right? Uh, you can shut down. Who says system? <laughs> ah, high five for system. <laughs> so you can do a lot with system. Um, you can do a lot of bad things, and we don't. If you notice, I actually made it red. <laughs> um, system's great, but the thing is we need to lock this down because we don't really want people to have, we have the ability to run system commands under the free switch user. Like, it's just, you know, if, it, if it's a controlled environment, that's fine, but we don't want to expose that to the world, right? Because in that scenario, really bad things can happen. So we go back to some more simple questions, right? When is ESL listening? On a standard install. Alex. Always. Yes. <laughs> and where is it listening? You said one question for a lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. 
<laughs> okay, so how many people in this room use ESL? How many people have changed the default password? <laughs> That's actually pretty good. <laughs> Can you ask the people this <laughs> How many people would ever admit to not changing the password? <laughs> what is <Okay>. your IP? <laughs> so, like so, so really, we come to a scenario where ESL is really a powerful thing, and, and the thing is, there's a default password. It's listening on localhost, and that's great, right? But what we really need to do is create per user and per application access user controls. Right? And so this can be done by with middleware, right? And so um, we we create a simple with Go, great language, lots of concurrency. Probably don't need it in this scenario with concurrency, but um, it's really easy to proxy connections with Go. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over how to really lock down ESL, how to make it so you have that per user and per application usage rights. Because when it comes down to it, ESL should really have more than a password that just allows you to do whatever you want. So it starts with, and then I'm gonna just go over the process flow of how it works, and then hopefully we'll actually run some uh, commands and kind of show, right? Okay, so we, it starts with an external request. So more recently, we've seen services where um, people are, are allowing public access to ESL, right? And so that's where this is really kind of coming from. Um, don't ever put ESL without any real security on it on a public interface. Don't do it. Not a good thing to do. Um, so we, we send a request. Um, we're going to check the user authentication details. So basically what we're going to do is in the, in the user directory, we're going to have a parameter or actually a variable which has, we're going to check the username and password for that user and then also, you know, go through a list of defined possible commands. And that's actually the whitelist. Then when all this passes, we're going to process the command DSL and then get the response. And it's, it, it's really all just that simple. So, you want to start? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Sorry, we had a little bit of technical problems with the laptops. Okay, so um, simple, simple Go application. You can see we're posting username, password, request. Uh, in this case, we're looking. We're just going to get the version of Preacher. Um, it's already posted, <laughs> but we can do it again just for fun. Authorized equals true. Um, but let's say we want to run system. Essentially, what we have here is this command before it would have been processed as usual. Why don't do it uh, with Dell net? What's that? <laughs> What's that stat? Can you give the old guys the explanation <laughs> what it's <laughs> 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 
Some people not born in the last few decades. Because this Milan is causing our lives so cool. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is cool. Actually, this Go application, which I wrote yesterday, <laughs> is only like a hundred lines of code. Um, and, it, and, and it's actually, it's quite functional. I'm going to put it up on GitHub. You guys can look at it. Um, really, what it comes down to is if you're going to if you're going to have something that's really public facing, this is, it's a good theory start, and it's a good use case in how something should be designed and put together, right? But in the end, don't use that specific code that I'm going to post without working on it a little bit, right? Uh, because it's designed just a little bit. Um, but the concept is important, um, and especially in a world where there's a little bit more, the nastiness is getting nastier and nastier, and I think over the next couple of years, stuff like this is going to become very, very <coughs> crucial. Um, we've started to see things where in the case of, it wasn't particularly a pre-switch problem, uh, but there was a PBX uh, application out there, and they were sending multi-part mind messages out to um, out to the free switch, and then what was happening from there was they were actually opening up a net cat, and in the somewhere in the middle, there was also uh, memcache poisoning. So it wasn't directly. This would not work. Uh, that vector would not work. But you never know what's going to happen in the future. But people are trying to access things on localhost, and it and and really. It's something that's going to be more and more prevalent because if they start to do it starting like, I don't know, six months ago, it's going to become more and more. Who knows? It could be the next, I don't know, sip vicious, right? Um, here, wait, we got to go back. Where's the other one? <laughs> okay, so I'm going, to ha I'm going to ask you guys some more questions. And the questions are, do you think this is valuable? Is it a good idea? Is it a good way to implement it? And the next person to ask that, answer that, will get a laptop. Or not a laptop, a <laughs> lollipop. <laughs> You're, You're not giving away a laptop. <laughs> You're giving that off your laptop? OK, is this a good idea? Someone want to comment on it? OK. Since nobody wants to comment on it, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> Which I think. You have to finish the presentation. <laughs> That's true. And never speak ever again. <laughs> is there a better way to do this? For sure. There is. For sure. Well, it depends what the access vector is, right? And so uh, you could just change the default password, right? <laughs> but that's that's only one application thing. Or that's where you control the application. But in a world where we where we're exposing these type of details to the public um, and having you know either Node.js or something like Go that sits in between and the customers are directly interacting, this becomes very important. <coughs> and then that kind of answers the question of how this could be used. There you go. Lollipop for you. So it was done with like 100 lines of code. I can't really put it up here. Uh, the ESL was written by someone from the UK. Uh, it was their package. Um, Dan's got one back there that's very good, too. Um, and it'll be available on GitHub. And that's all, folks. Anyone have any questions? Hey, hey, why does everyone want to take my job? Especially that I have two months now. So first of all, let's give a little round of applause here for our friend Mike. You want to do my job, too? No, I have a question. OK. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> How good or bad an idea is it to put free switch on a uh, public cloud like Amazon or is it, and how to secure it if you put it? 
It's, it's actually a great idea. There, there are a lot of installations on public clouds. Um, so really, there isn't any issue. It's easily to handle. It's not very easy, uh, very simple. Um, and security? Uh, well, the security is the same. Security is the same. I mean, the, the thing is, the default, like, there's, some, there's only really two default uh, passwords at all at Freeswit. Um, one is in vars.xml, and then the other one is in the HTML selfish one. Um, always change those. And for the web API. Any what? other questions? No. Oh, you want to use this microphone? Yeah. <laughs> but the, the, there is an important thing. Um, this uh, access uh, to the ESL is not on the public internet, so you can access only on the local host. So it's not at all a, a security problem. You must uh, change uh, the configuration and uh, put it uh, on the public internet uh, by your will. And uh, this is uh, totally discouraged by uh, developer and by the free switch community. Mm -hmm. The ESL has only to be used or on the local host or through a VPN. That's it. Or the local network, like the private network. The private network? No, you, you yeah, it, it, it's by uh, default it's on local host. It's on local host. Right, it's on local host. You, you can't uh, from one machine to another. Why not? You can. You can? Yeah, if you open it. Yeah, but if it's a, but somebody hold this. Let's go outside. <laughs> <laughs> don't put it on public network. Never put ESL on the public network. Just don't do Does it. anyone else have any other questions? We've got some heated discussions going on here in the front of the room. Someone's gonna like get a boot or something. All right, one more round of applause for Mike. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> No kiddies were hurt in the process of this speech. I am actually increasing my by one. There will be a kitty picture today, people. There will. <laughs>